Hello guys, welcome to Aviator Guide. Today we are going to study meteorology. Meteorology is the science of atmosphere and weather. So, I'll write it over here. I have written the topics on this side that we are going to cover today. We are also going to study general navigation. But uh, for this uh, episode, we are going to study about meteorology. So basically, this word means the science of the atmosphere and the atmosphere around us. So as aviators, we need to have a very good idea about the weather because we have to fly through different types of weather and different types of clouds and different types of weather phenomena. So if we are aware of the different weather phenomena, we can make our flying safer and it is better to be safe than to use our skills in the end. So today we will be studying about, uh, first of all we will be studying about the atmosphere, that is our first uh, topic. So I will write it over here, atmosphere. So as we all know that we live on planet earth. So let's assume this is our planet earth. So earth is having gravity as all other planets have gravity. There are about 9 planets in our solar system. All of them have gravity around them. So because of the mass, the mass of the earth that we label as M, it has a gravitational force which exerts on every object around earth which has mass. So the atmosphere around the earth surface is basically the gaseous, gaseous matter or the gases which are trapped by the earth's gravity which is around us. So in other words as there are different planets so this is earth there are other planets like there is Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto they all have their own atmospheres and that is different composition as compared to earth. But because of the gravity of the earth, the composition of the atmosphere, as the air molecules are there, different types of gases are there around the earth. So all those gases are bound to earth by the force of gravity. So if the gravity vanishes any day, the gases will all go into the space and we will not be able to live on earth. So because of the gravity, the atmosphere on earth is mainly composed of uh, some fundamental gases. One of them is nitrogen or N2. This accounts for about 78% as we all know. So 78% of the atmosphere around earth is made up of nitrogen. Then there is oxygen which is very essential to all the life forms. Its symbol is O2 and it accounts to about 21%. To be more precise, 20.9%. So, this all accounts to these two major gases accounts for about, let's say, 95 to 99% of the atmosphere. The rest is argon. Then there is carbon dioxide, which we name as CO2. We can write carbon dioxide. And then there are the trace gases. So, while studying the mythology, it is important to know the composition of the atmosphere around Earth. Atmosphere is a layer, very thin layer of gases which is present around Earth. And those are composed of the following gases, nitrogen, oxygen, argon, carbon dioxide and trace gases. So, among these trace gases, is methane which we write as CH4 then there is uh, many other gases like helium and other also so how does these gases play a role we all know that because of the oxygen we are able to get energy from our food and the plants also use oxygen plants require oxygen and carbon dioxide so as to sustain life. 
So there are two processes in plants. One we know as photosynthesis. They use CO2 and water which is present in the earth. And sunlight which comes from the sun over here, let's say. So sun provides the energy. Carbon dioxide provides the carbon source. And the water is used by the plants to create glucose which we all consume as food if we are vegetarians. Which animals eat and we also consume animals if we are non-vegetarians. But now we are studying about metallurgy. So all of these gases have their own role. But the most important gas which is in the atmosphere which has its own advantage and most of the metallurgy and weather around the earth's surface is made of this thing here. Water vapor. So most of the weather that we study in metallurgy is basically because of water vapor in the atmosphere which accounts for a very small amount in the atmosphere but this gas the water vapor this has the most prominent role in creation of the weather around the earth so so let's recap the gases around us make the atmosphere gases are held around us because of gravity the major gases are nitrogen which accounts for 78 percent oxygen that accounts for 21 percent or 20.9 percent precisely then there are trace gases such as carbon dioxide and then methane, helium, etc. And the most important thing is water vapor. So because of water vapor, all the clouds, all the weather phenomena, all the different things happen in our atmosphere. So let me discuss more about it. So we discussed about the atmosphere of the earth. The atmosphere is fairly constant up to 60 kilometers around the earth. I will draw that here. Because of the earth's gravity, different gases get separated. So atmosphere is fairly constant up to 60 kilometers. So it is very homogeneous in this sense. So as we were discussing about water vapor, What happens is, as we all know about the water cycle, because of this water vapor, how it, and most importantly water, the main component of the atmosphere is water. Anywhere there is water, there is weather. What happens is, water is present in the form of uh, ice, it is form, um, in the form of rain, in the form of snow, in the form of hail, and many others also. So water is found in atmosphere in different forms. Let's say this is the planet earth over here. And we have many lakes, oceans, ponds, wells and many other water bodies like seas. So the energy from the sun, which is our star, it comes to the earth and it evaporates the water from all of this, which then becomes gaseous in the form of water vapor. So the energy that is coming from the solar radiation that is getting converted to make the liquid water present in all of these sources into water vapor which forms different kinds of weather phenomena such as rain, snow and hail and so on. Many other things also happen. So all of this is because of the water vapor present in the atmosphere. So the composition is already discussed. That is the major gases, minor gases and most importantly water vapor which makes much of the atmosphere. Now I will be discussing about the layers of the atmosphere and what is their significance to us. So I will be erasing all of this. 
and we'll be studying about the layers of the atmosphere. So as we know, atmosphere is a thin layer of gases present around the earth. So let's say that we will draw earth in the center of the whiteboard. So this is the earth, our blue planet, and which is very unique as it is the only planet which has life on it. So there is life on earth, right? I'll write life over here. So now we'll be studying about the layers of atmosphere. Layers of atmosphere. So as the earth has life on it, so the closest layer to the earth's surface is called, any ideas? The closest layer to the earth's surface is called troposphere. Where tropos means life. So I will write it over here. Troposphere. Where tropos means life. This layer is not uniform. It is not a perfect circle. As our earth is not a circle that you will learn in the general navigation lesson. The earth is not a circle. So the troposphere is not a perfect circular or a spherical layer to be exact in 3D. It is higher, as you know, on the earth, on the center there is equator and this is the north pole, this is the south pole. So at the center of the earth, near the equator, the height of the tropopause is the highest and near the poles, the height of the tropopause is the lowest. So approximately near the equator, it is about 18 kilometer high. This is basically the height above the earth's surface. At the poles, it is about 8 kilometer. So our correction, it is about 16 kilometers, not exactly 18 kilometers. So over the equator, it is 16 kilometers over the poles it is 8 kilometers. So now this also varies with the uh, season or with different months or different temperature areas. Now you can see the air around the equator that is the center part of the earth in the tropical equatorial zone. The air is hot around the earth. So as this is troposphere around the earth. So the air is hot here. Near the pole as you know Arctic and Antarctic, the air is very cold. So wherever the air is hot in the troposphere, the tropopause height is more. Let's say here it is about 16 kilometers. Here the air around the earth is cold. The tropopause is closer to the earth. There is also another variation. When there is summers, and when there is winter. So if we say that in summers over the northern hemisphere on the north pole, the tropopause will be farther away and in the winters it comes closer. So wherever there is higher temperature, the tropopause is farther away and also on the poles, let's say in the southern hemisphere when there is summer in December or Jan. The tropopause will be farther away. If there is winter, the tropopause will be nearer. So approximately about at 45 degrees of latitude over here, the tropopause has a height of 11 kilometer or troposphere has a height of 11 kilometer. So where the boundary of the troposphere is called the tropopause. So this all is the tropopause and the height of the tropopause or the height of the entire troposphere. So the tropopause over the equator is 16 kilometers. At the poles is roughly 8 kilometers and over 45 degrees of latitude is about 11 kilometers. So this continues and there are many breaks in the tropopause which we will discuss in the next chapter when it comes. 
So tropopause, the main function feature of the tropopause is that the temperature decreases with altitude. So when we go higher and higher in the troposphere, the temperature will decrease by alt with altitude and the decrease in temperature with altitude is about 1.98 degrees Celsius per 1000 feet. So this is called the lapse rate. So the temperature decreases from the surface of the earth up till the tropopause covering all the troposphere till a height of 16 kilometers and 8 kilometers over the pole approximately 11 kilometers and here is what is called as tropopause. Tropopause is defined as the end of temperature fall or in tropopause tropopause where it starts this lapse rate is over so from 11 kilometers to about 20 kilometers the temperature is constant the flying happens mostly in the troposphere and the next layer after tropopause which is also known as stratosphere So the next layer is stratosphere which extends up to I can't draw the entire layers of the earth on this and explain them because it is a small whiteboard but the stratosphere extends up to 50 km in total from the earth's surface in it the temperature is constant up to 20 km from 11 km the tropopause is there 11 to 20 km the temperature is constant there is no lapse rate and after 20 kilometers from approximately 20 kilometers to 25 kilometers the temperature rises why is this the temperature is falling from the surface of the earth till the tropopause which is about 11 kilometers at 45 degrees of latitude and then it is constant till 20 kilometers in representation over here so this is constant zone then it again increases from 20 kilometers to 25 kilometers. That is because in the second layer of the earth or the stratosphere, the very important gas known as ozone is present. So what ozone does is whenever there are oxygen molecules in the atmosphere, as we know, 21% of the atmosphere is made up of oxygen. So the sunlight falls on oxygen molecules and it breaks them into oxygen ions. So from one molecule of oxygen there are two atoms of oxygen created and subsequently from other also there will be more oxygen atoms created which then recombine to form O3 or ozone. As we have learnt in chemistry that when some energy, energy from here is used to break the oxygen, so energy is absorbed. So when two atoms of oxygen are liberated from this, energy is absorbed. But then when the third atom of oxygen combines to form O3, which is a bigger molecule. So in this process, energy is liberated again. So because of this process, when the energy is liberated, when the ozone is formed, the temperature rises and from 20 kilometers to 25 kilometers, this energy results in temperature rise in the stratus. After that, from 50 kilometers onwards, that is the third layer of the atmosphere, which is known as mesosphere. And in this layer, the temperature basically falls. And this is basically the very cold layer. 
so this is the coldest layer of the atmosphere the temperature can be fairly between minus 150 to minus 200 degrees celsius in mesosphere then there is a other surprise of nature above mesosphere here the temperature was let's say at sea level 15 degrees only that is arisa 15 degrees celsius at sea level then over 11 kilometer or the tropo pause the temperature is minus 56 0.5 degrees celsius approximately so now the temperature was constant till 20 kilometers so it is minus 56.5 till 20 kilometers then further it increases then further it is constant but over here it is about minus 200 degrees celsius in the mesosphere then as you would assume that we are going farther away from earth uh, the temperature should have fallen more but then there is another mystery so the next layer basically the solar radiation is so much in this layer that it ionizes all of the gaseous molecules present in that layer so basically this layer is called the thermosphere So the first part of the layer outside the mesosphere is called the thermosphere and the other part is called the exosphere. So in the thermosphere and these both are together referred to as ionosphere. So here the solar radiation which comes it breaks down all the gaseous molecules present at that height and that forms the different ions of the gases or charged particles and because of the breakdown and the absorption and the intense solar radiation the temperature in this thermosphere can go up to 2000 degrees celsius and the last part is the exosphere which is undefined so the upper boundary of exosphere is not clearly defined so that is all the layers of the atmosphere i will give a recap for you once more this is our blue planet earth life is there on earth so the first layer around the earth is troposphere where tropos means life so the troposphere is not a spherical layer it is not well defined as a sphere it has many breaks about three breaks and then the layer at the equator is 16 kilometers high and above the poles is 8 kilometers high because of the hot air around the equator and the cool air over the pole. So over the equator it goes about to 16 kilometers. There is one more thing to note here. This drop of pause is the coldest over the equator. Over the poles it is warm. So over here it was minus 56.5 and over here it is the coolest so it will be more cold than minus 56.5 here it is more warmer it is contrast to the earth's surface on the earth near the equator it is hot and over the poles it is cold but at tropopause height it is the coldest over the equator about minus 80 degrees celsius and over the poles it is half of it approximately so this is the troposphere all of the life is present in it next layer is the stratosphere where the temperature fall or temperature lapse rate ceases and from 11 kilometers approximately to 20 kilometers the temperature is constant then from 20 kilometers to 25 kilometers ozone is present the solar radiation breaks down oxygen molecules into oxygen atoms which combine to form ozone which releases energy so again the temperature rises from 20 to 25 kilometers then from 50 kilometers higher about 80 kilometers there is mesosphere mesosphere is basically the coldest layer of the atmosphere again has a temperature fall and its temperature can go up till minus 200 degrees celsius after it there is due to intense solar ionization solar radiation ionizes the gaseous molecules present which forms the ionosphere which has two parts one is thermosphere and the other part is exosphere so 
Aerosphere has two parts, inside is thermosphere, outside exosphere and it is not clearly defined the height of it. So it can go up to 2000 degrees Celsius and most of the ions of the gases are there. Now we are going to study about the International Standard Atmosphere, also known as ISA. International Standard Atmosphere. So what is International Standard Atmosphere? As you know, we have to fly an aircraft. So we have to calibrate its instruments such as the altimeter, airspeed indicator and the VSI or the vertical speed indicator. But atmosphere around us or the weather keeps changing day in day out. So if I am present at this location today and the temperature is 20 degrees Celsius, after about 10 days it might be 22, 23, in summers it might be 30, in winters it might be 15. So we need a constant variation. So there is a constant variation in the atmosphere. So because of that, the aircraft instruments will never take the, tell the correct altitude or the airspeed. So because of that, we made or the international community made ISA or the standard atmosphere which is also known as international standard atmosphere. So what it tells is, it is a model of the atmosphere, it is not a real atmosphere. So it is a standard model that is followed throughout the world and it is used to make a standard model which runs all the instruments in the aircraft. So I am drawing the earth over here. So as 70% of the earth's surface is covered by water, so I am drawing sea level over here. So what ISA tells is, at sea level, the temperature is 15 degree Celsius. So that is the standard temperature at sea level. And the pressure is 29.92 inches of mercury or we can also say it as 1013.25 hectopascals. These are two different units. This is used mostly in the US and this is used in the rest of the world. And the density of the air at sea level is 1225 gram per meter cube. Or we can say dividing it by 1000 as 1.225 kilogram per meter cube. Now you would ask what is this density? This is basically the weight of the atmosphere which it exerts over 1 meter cube of area of land. So air as we already discussed is held together by gravity. So that exerts about 1.225 kilogram of weight over 1 meter cube of area at sea level. So I'll recap, the sea level temperature is 15 degrees Celsius, the pressure is 1013.25 hectopascals and the density of the air is 1225 kilogram per meter cube. So this is basically the ISA sea level. Now these all have their lapse rates. So at about 18,000 feet roughly, Half of the weight of the atmosphere has already passed. So this is reduced to half at about 18,000 feet. So the temperature decreases at about 1.98 degrees Celsius per 1,000 feet as we already discussed earlier, rounding it off to 2 degrees Celsius per 1,000 feet so the lapse rate is 2 degrees Celsius per 1000 feet and the ISA atmosphere is modeled up to a height of 32 km above mean sea level which is roughly 105000 feet. So from sea level as we already discussed up till 11 km at about 45 degrees of latitude. The temperature will lapse at about 2 degrees Celsius per 1000 feet. So at about 11 kilometers, the temperature would be minus 56.5 degree Celsius. That is approximately about 36,000 feet. 
above mean sea level. That is roughly the height of the tropopause. So that is regarding the temperature lapse rate. The pressure also lapses at about 1 hectopascal per about 27 feet at about sea level rounded off to 1 hectopascal per about 30 feet for ease of calculations and further the lapse rate for pressure changes uh, as we go higher and higher. It is not the constant as the temperature lapse rate. So then the density also varies that I have told earlier. So from about 11 kilometer till about 20 kilometer the temperature does not decrease. So the temperature lapse rate is zero. So at about 20 kilometers it is also about minus 56.5 degrees Celsius. So this would equate to approximately 65,000 feet. So from 20 kilometers till about 50 kilometers that is basically beyond the ISA atmosphere definition the temperature increases by about 0 0.3 degrees Celsius per every thousand feet that is due to the presence of ozone in the stratosphere. So according to this model which I recap sea level 15 degrees Celsius lapse rate of 2 degrees Celsius per thousand feet then up till 11 kilometers the same lapse rate at the temperature is minus 56.5 at 11 kilometers or 36,000 feet. Then from there over tropopause in the stratosphere the temperature is fairly constant from 11 to 20 kilometers or 36,000 feet to 65,000 feet and it is about minus 56.5. Then further it increases due to the presence of ozone from about 20 kilometers till about uh, 50 kilometers but ISA is defined from sea level to 32 kilometers only. So that is the model atmosphere which the international community has made. So as to model the instruments which we will be covering in the later chapters or later lessons. So this atmosphere helps in calibrating all of those instruments and in day to day flight. So now I will be talking about ISA deviation. So what, how can the atmosphere be different from ISA and how does it affect us? So ISA which I already discussed, the atmosphere can be different from ISA in terms of temperature, in terms of pressure, in terms of humidity. So in terms of temperature if we say, if we say that this is basically a land mass and from here it is basically the sea. So this is sea level and the temperature should be 15 degrees Celsius at sea level according to ISA. So if there is an air field over here, let us say about 1000 feet high from the sea level. So according to ISA, the temperature should be about 2 degrees Celsius lower which should be about 13 degrees Celsius at this airfield. So I will write 13 over here according to ISA. But let us say the temperature today here is about 25 degrees Celsius which can happen in real life because ISA is not real life. So if the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius and the ISA says that it should be 13 degrees Celsius, then we subtract 25 degrees Celsius minus 13 degrees Celsius which gives us about 12 degrees Celsius. So this is actual temperature minus the ISA temperature that gives us ISA deviation. 
so we can say actual minus isa that is the isa deviation in other words we can say that the real temperature is about 12 degrees celsius hotter than isa or 25 degrees celsius it is the real temperature some days there will be more humidity at the airfield some days the pressure would be more some days the pressure would be less so this all affects our instruments and how they read the altitude the air speed etc and it also affects the performance of the aircraft that will be discussed in the next lesson but this is known as the isa deviation thank you for watching aviator guide i hope you liked our first lesson uh, more to come very soon uh, keep watching like and subscribe thank you